How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Coach Matt coming at you with one eye closed because it's the cool thing to do. Welcome back to the channel, the Daily Baseball Report, where we go over all things baseball and baseball related news. I'm Coach Matt. If you haven't been here before, please hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell, and please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. We are on the road to 1K by opening day, so please hit the subscribe button and share this channel with everyone that you can, everyone who's a big baseball fan, and heck, anyone who's not a baseball fan. Maybe that's how we can grow the game. That's, that's your homework for today. Please share this channel with any, someone who is not a baseball fan to see if we can make them into a baseball fan. Starting things off, the Houston Astros signed Jake Odorizzi on a two-year, $30 million deal, option for a third year, and the, the numbers aren't exactly, they haven't been uh, reported yet, the exact numbers. There might be some incentive for him to make more money, but at this point, it sounds to be just a two-year, $30 million deal, and if we go back to our right eye closed situation. The Houston Astros are trying to band-aid their Justin Verlander, Fran Valdez injuries by signing Jake Odorizzi. So they are literally just having one eye closed and just shooting at something and hoping it sticks. That's the way I see it. I think Jake Odorizzi is a pretty decent pitcher, but I do not think he can replace Justin Verlander or Fran Valdez. First, we're going to have Jacob deGrom continues to be Jacob D dominant over the Houston Astros, where he pitched two innings, he gave up one hit, one walk, three strikeouts, and has a zero ERA. He's very good. Just mid-season form already this early into spring training. Moving on over to the Washington Nationals. Patrick Corbin had a pretty decent start in his first spring training start. He pitched two innings. He gave up two hits, gave up one earned run, and had three strikeouts. The Nationals are going to need him to be very good this year. I think that was a pretty decent start, but with the... Max Scherzer not performing very well. The Nationals really need Corbin to have a very good season. We'll see what happens with Scherzer and how his body responds. He's starting to get a little bit older. We'll see how things... The, the Nationals really need Corbin to be excellent this year with Strasburg and Scherzer and Lester. J-Mo Jamison Tyon made his start against his old team, the Pittsburgh Pirates, yesterday. And he pitched two innings. He gave up two hits. One walk, four strikeouts, and he has a zero ERA. He did say that it was kind of surreal being on the other side. Gregory Prolanco had three hits and three RBIs in the game. And Jay Bruce of the Yankees hit a home run. Now, Jay Bruce has gotten getting a little bit older in age there. And he's still producing at the major league level. I remember he used to be one of the most feared hitters. This guy used to hit the ball 430 feet every single time he came up at bat. I mean, he's 33, and his production has dropped off quite a bit. But if the Yankees can get him to have even 50% of what he used to be, they got him in a steal. Trevor Bauer pitched three innings against the San Diego Padres, where he had one inning, where he had one eye closed the entire inning. Because he wanted to challenge himself and make it more difficult to pitch against a team who potentially is going to have one of the better offenses in all of baseball. His stat line was three innings. He gave up two hits. He gave up one walk, struck out three, and his ERA remains zero. Justin Turner is up for question. I know that the a lot of the league was balking at the fact that he is an aging third baseman whose defensive statistics and range seems to be on the decline. But based on what we see here, Justin Turner is aging like a fine wine and doing just fine. The Dodgers definitely needed to sign him. He is the glue to the LA Dodgers clubhouse. Bobby Witt Jr. went two for three with two runs, two RBIs, and a bomb against the San Francisco Giants. Now, this guy, Bobby Witt Jr., is six feet one, 200 pounds, and he's only 20 years old. I personally think that Kansas City Royals need this guy in the big leagues as soon as possible. Yeah, I think that he 100% needs to develop in the big leagues, just like Juan Soto did. And look at Juan Soto. He's one of the most feared hitters in baseball. The guy's awesome. 
Bobby Witt Jr. is going to be a star. 100% this guy is going to be a star. I can't wait to see this guy in Major League games very soon. In the same game, Mike Miner on his comeback trail had a pretty good outing. He pitched two innings, had three strikeouts, and had a zero ERA. Pretty awesome from a guy who has been written off by a lot of major league organizations. On the other side of the ball, Johnny Cueto made his spring appearance against the Royals. He had a two-inning outing, gave up one hit. He had four strikeouts, for a good, good for zero ERA. I know the San Francisco Giants really need him to be very good this year for them to be somewhat competitive. And everyone knows baseball is better when the rivals are best. So when the Yankees and Red Sox are both good, when the Cubs and Cardinals are good, and when the Dodgers and Giants are good, those are the three biggest rivalries in all of baseball. And without a doubt, when all the teams are good, baseball is more exciting, it's better, viewership is better, and we can grow the game better. Now, we got to mix in those San Diego Padres now on the, from the NL West side, but regardless, the main thing is the Giants. If the Giants are better, if Cueto is better, if Alex Wood is good, if Gosman is the same as he was last year, the Giants are going to be fairly competitive, and it'll be wonderful to have them competitive again. Moving over to the Chicago White Sox game, I'm going to input the box score. I'm going to point you into the first three hitters. First off, Luis Robert went two for three with two runs. And he's hitting 545 with an OPS of 1.311. He also had a stolen base. Adam Eaton went two for three with two runs scored and an RBI. And he's hitting 375 with a 1,000 OPS. And Luri Garcia went two for two with two RBIs and two runs scored and a walk. And is hitting 429, 1.494 OPS. These three guys are hitting what I expected the Atlanta Braves to be hitting. The Atlanta Braves are hitting below the Mendoza line and seeing the Chicago White Sox hitting as good as they are. And they didn't even have Jose Abreu in this game. It's going to be really cool to see the Chicago White Sox just go crazy and hit double after double after double against the rest of the American League. These guys are going to be a lot of fun to watch. I do think that they're one of the top three best American League teams. But I do not think that they are the best American League team. Going back to this video that I had right there. Click that video if you want to check that one out. But it's pretty cool to see these guys just starting to just crush the ball and hit as well as they are this early in the spring training. Joe Adele hit his first spring training home run yesterday. And boy, did he not miss. This ball was crushed. It was straight blast over the, the grassy area in the left center field pavilion. Just a, a mammoth shot. Finally hit his first spring training home run. I'm hoping he gets a little bit more comfortable in his situation with the Angels. The Angels need him to be a productive hitter so that way they could be they could compete with the A's and the Astros. On the pitching side, Jose Quintana had his second outing and he pitched two innings, had one walk, had four strikeouts, and still has a zero ERA. He's pretty much perfect so far in spring training. It's only a three inning sample size, so it's not that we don't want to look too far into it yet, but still is a pretty good start for Angels pitching staff. Quintana isn't considered a star in terms of pitching, but he is a pretty good B-list pitcher. The modern day Greg Maddox made his pitching debut yesterday with the Arizona Diamondbacks. He pitched three innings, gave up one hit, one walk and had three strikeouts. Keitel Marte on the offensive side for the Arizona Diamondbacks, a two hit, one run performance, and he is currently hitting 600 with a 1.536 OPS. He is also another one of those players I'm not sure will be on the Diamondbacks come trade deadline. He might be a piece that might get moved. Do you think Keitel Marte will be on the Arizona Diamondbacks come trade deadline? Jock Peterson hit another dinger for the Chicago Cubs. I know us Dodger fans are really going to miss seeing that. And being in the Windy City, he could definitely have a lot of wind-blown home runs. And I wonder if he's going to have a 40 home run season. He was very close a couple of years with the Dodgers. But it'll be interesting to see how he does with the wind that possibly could help him with some of his 
you know, potential pop outs that'll just get blown into the stands in Chicago. King Felix is continuing his decline into Jester Felix. I feel bad for this guy. He was once one of baseball's hidden gems who used to pitch two or three or four complete games a season. One of Cy Young used to have 10 strikeouts a game. He had an ERA that was under two, if I recall, in one, his Cy Young year was under two, or it might've been 2.1 or some, something like that. But it's sad to see a player of this stature who had so much success just decline at such a rate where he is being considered to be a jester Felix instead of King Felix. I wonder if his career will just continue being a journeyman's career where his career ends on a sour note. It's just a sad end to a, a really good story. Pitched two innings, he gave up two hits, two earned runs, he had two walks, he had two strikeouts, and his ERA currently sits at nine. I really hope that he figures it out because it, it really would be a sad end to a good story. Going into the hat reference for the day, I'm currently wearing a Colorado Rockies hat, and it's kind of a funny story. I got the hat at a DU, a Denver University alumni event, and they have these chapters all over the country. This chapter was in the Bay Area. I was living in the Bay Area. Signed up to go to this alumni event where you get to go and hang out with other DU alumnus. And it was at a San Francisco Giants baseball game when the Rockies came to town. And we got to go sit upstairs in the outdoor deck and have some free appetizers and drinks and get to network. And then we go inside and then watch the game. During a day game, it was a lot of fun. The, the San Francisco Park is a lot of fun to go to during the day because the sun is out and Carl the Fog hasn't rolled in. When Carl the Fog rolls in, the temperature drops probably about 20 degrees on average, and it's it, it, it can potentially be drastic to your plans for whatever it is that you do. So if you go, make sure that you uh, go during the daytime and that the sun is out and it's warm. Uh, there are some summer games that are pretty nice to go to in the evening. It's just, it gets really cold at night in San Francisco. So. If you do go at night, bring a jacket. It is just awful when it's cold and baseball is being played. So some new news for all of you watching. Next Sunday, March 14th, Coach Matt is going to go live on YouTube with all of you. And I want you all to attend. We're going to talk all things baseball. We're going to get some advanced analytics. We're going to talk about some potential trade deadline trades. We're going to talk about the free agent signings of the past off season. And I want you all to join and I want you to be interactive. I, will, I want to see what my viewers want to talk about, what you all want to hear, what you want to see in this, on this channel. I'm going to continue to do things the way that I have been. But if you all have some input, I would love to get that from you all. So put it on your calendars, March 14th, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I will be going live on YouTube and I want you all to join. So please subscribe to the channel, put, hit the notification bell, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And without further ado, we will see you again tomorrow and next Sunday. See you guys. Next time.